Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala ba'd. So today we're going to talk about fasting the month of Ramadan. And we need to have an idea about what fasting is. What it means Islamically. What does fasting mean Islamically? Who knows what fasting means Islamically? Aywa'a. Okay, that has to do with, with some of the reasons behind fasting. That's some of the wisdom behind fasting, the dunya wi wisdom. But uh huh, what does fasting mean? Fasting means that you're not about to eat for the truth. Uh huh. Okay. Okay, good, very good. So that was pretty good. Uh, so fasting. Let's let's get let's get back on track now. That was a pretty good definition. Fasting means it means staying away from or refraining from eating, drinking, and having relations that the husband and wife have, uh, along with the intention to do so. That means you have to have your niyyah, your intention. In the ma'mad of niyyah, the Prophet wasallam said. Actions are tied to the intentions. So, Allah, that we have to have intention. This is very important, Rashad. Listen. So, it's not eating or drinking or having uh, the intercourse. And also, having the intention. That means you have to have the niya because fasting is worship. Fasting is ibadah. Fast, fasting. Is fasting worship in Islam? Yes. That means you're coming closer to Allah by fasting. You're doing something that Allah has asked us to do in the Quran. And the Prophet ﷺ illustrated for us in his life that he fasted. And so fasting in Islam, it means refraining from eating, drinking, sexual intercourse, along with the intention to do so. It's not if, just because you stop eating and drinking, but you don't have an intention, then it's not fasting in Islam. Someone who, because someone who stops eating and drinking, that means they're taking a diet. That means they're doing a, some yoga, yoga-like practices. But the Muslim has the intention, as the Prophet ﷺ said, in the Ma'mad al Verily, actions are tied to the intentions. Because everything in Islam has to have those two conditions for worship. Meaning that you have ikhlas, sincerity to Allah. So that is the intention. So you're making your sincerity to Allah, the fast for Allah. And you have to do it like who? Like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So everything you have to have ikhlas wa, wa mutaba, that you follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we have to also know that although Ramadan is coming close to us, 20 days or so, not everyone's going to make it to Ramadan this year. Just like every year. So we make our intention to fast Ramadan, but we don't know if we're going to live that long. We don't know what Allah has in store for us, what, our de what the qadr is, what the decree. Many people, some people are old, some people are sick, some people are young like you, and they're not going to make it to Ramadan. Because something could happen to them or it just was written for them. Their life was not uh, meant to, to live to that time. So we have to know Ramadan is ibadah, it's worship. And we're not guaranteed to make that, but we have to have the intention to do so. And so, again, not eating, not drinking, not having uh, those relations with intention from the dawn to the sunset. The dawn means the, the time when Fajr is coming in. When that, that little bit of light, the light of Fajr is coming in. That means after that time you cannot eat. Up to that time you can eat and drink and have relations. But up when that time shows, when it becomes, it enters Fajr, it is haram for you to eat and drink and do those things. And that is until sunset. When is sunset? What prayer is sunset prayer that comes in? What, what? Maghrib. Jazakallah khairam. So, until Maghrib, until sunset, we don't eat, we, we fast. We don't eat, we don't drink, and we don't do those other things which can break our fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ladina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
it is written upon you to fast similar to the way the people before you fasted in order that you would have taqwa why do you fast again what is it going to help you do have what okay that's good but what did i just say what and related to the ayat exactly with the ayat huh? What does that mean? Taqwa. Good. And taqwa means to fear Allah. To do those things Allah has asked you to do and stay away from those things Allah has prohibited you from. So when you fast, sinner, when you fast, it helps you fear Allah. Because you remember Allah, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you want to fulfill your desires. But you're stopping for the sake of Allah. And that, and you're remembering Allah. You're reading the Quran. You're doing those things which will help you come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So fasting is prescribed for you. That shows us it's an obligation that we have to fast if we are the people who are required to fast. And we'll talk about that. Uh, so fasting, we have to make intention when we fast Ramadan to make intention the, the night before Ramadan. I mean, the night before we're going to fast in the day. So we should make our intention during that time. During that time, we should make our intention. And we make our intention every night of Ramadan. Before Fajr, you should make your intention. Everybody understands? Before Fajr, we make our intention. So we don't make intention just at the beginning of Ramadan and say, I'm going to fast the month of Ramadan. But also think in your mind and in your heart every night, tomorrow I'm going to fast Ramadan. Okay? That's what the ulama say, the scholars say, about making your intention for fasting. And there are many, many hadith that show us about the benefits of fasting. One thing uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and that you fast, it is better for you if you only knew. وَإِن تُصُومُ خَيْرًا لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and that you fast is better for you. So it's better for you if you do what? Rashad. If you fast. If you only knew. So showing you that there's a lot of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah oh, and praises those people who fast all throughout the Qur'an. Uh, and talks about them, the people who fast, the men and women who observe fasting, uh, the men and women who guard their chastity, the men and women who remember Allah much. Those are the people Allah will give a great reward to, as Allah mentions in the Quran. And there's many hadith about uh, fasting and how fasting in the Quran will bless, will be a blessing and intercede for you, make shifa for you on Yom Al-Qiyamah. The Prophet wasallam said, fasting in the Quran uh, with Allah for the slave on the day of resurrection saying uh, will we'll say fasting and the Quran will say oh Lord I prevented him from eating food and from giving to his desires during the day so make me an intercessor for him and the Quran will say Neda, the Quran will say I prevented him sleeping at night so make me an intercessor for him and then the Prophet ﷺ said, Then Allah will grant them intercession. So this is the authentic hadith. That the Qur'an and also fasting will intercede for you on the day of judgment. It will be make shafa'at for you. Uh, the, another thing, al rayyan gate uh, through which the people who used to observe fast will enter paradise. So there's a, a special gate in paradise for the people who fast. The people who fasted, they will enter this special gate. The Prophet wasallam said, as was reported by Sahal ibn, uh, ibn Sa'ib, he said, Verily in paradise, there is a gate known as Arrayan. And he said, Through which the people who used to fast will enter on the day of resurrection. And none except them will enter through it. So this is a special gate in Jannah that only the people who fasted will enter. And... Uh, then it will be said so in Jannah it will be said where are those people who used to fast and they will get up and enter the people who used to fast they will get up who will get up uh, um, in, in Jannah huh? the people who used to fast good 
and none except them will go through this gate none except those people who fasted will enter this gate after their entry the gate will be closed and nobody else will enter through it that's also a, a, an authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that was in, that's narrated in Bukhari and Muslim and Tirmidhi and Nisa'i and, and other uh, hadith books also in another hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, mentioned that fasting is a protection for the slave who fasts from the hellfire fasting can help you protect yourself from the hellfire Raise your hand if you want to go to the hellfire. Okay, I don't think anybody wants to go to hellfire. So then we have to look at those things that will protect us from the hellfire, like fasting. Fasting is one of the things. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Men sama yomin fi sabilillah jaalallahu bainu huwa bain al nar khandaqin kama bain al samai wal ard." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. And this is the hadith of Abu uh, Umama al-Bahli that the Prophet sallallahu said whoever fasted for a day in Allah's cause fi sabilillah Allah will place a trench do you know what a trench is a trench is like a big ditch you know what a ditch is it's like a place where you, when you dig out in the ground in the sand or the dirt and then there's nothing in there where they put those cables that's called a trench or a ditch uh, so Whoever fasted for a day in the cause of Allah, this is just one day of fasting. For the sake of Allah, meaning you did it only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will place a trench between him and the fire, as wide as the distance between heaven and the uh, and the earth. So there will be a trench between you and the hellfire if you fast one day for the sake of Allah. So that's why it shows us it's important to fast. And it's very important to fast the, the holy month of Ramadan as it's wajib. The Prophet said, Al-Sum Jannatum min al-Nar. Kud Jannati ahadikum min min al-Kitab. The Prophet said, Fasting is a shield. The shield, like the shield of any one of you in battle. So fasting is also what? What is it, Rashad? No, you're not listening. Pay attention, take the uh, flower out of your hand and listen. What is fasting? Jazakallah khairan. It's a shield. A fasting is a shield. You know what a shield is? That's what the warriors, they, they carry. And so fasting is also a shield from the hellfire, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Another, another many hadith. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Som jannatu ma lam uh, Fasting is a shield as long as the slave does not pierce it. So as long as you don't break your fast that you fast like you're supposed to. So it's a shield for you, it'll protect you from the hellfire. Fasting also will, uh, there's many, many benefits of fasting, but we're gonna talk more about the ahkam of fasting. And we'll talk during this, before, before Ramadan, we're gonna talk a lot about hadith. We're gonna sit many times. Every night we're gonna have a hadith about fasting, about the benefits of fasting to encourage you guys to fast so that we, we know about it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the Prophet said, You should fast, for there is nothing like it. So there's many, many benefits of fasting. Let's talk now about some of the rulings related to fasting now. So, when should we fast? When we're, we're talking about Ramadan here. So, we must fast if someone sees the crescent moon. The crescent moon is, is the moon when it looks like, it's called the Hilal. It looks like a, you, you don't know what a crescent is, anybody knows what a crescent is? You know what one is? Yeah, it's like that. That's full. No, it's not full. It's the small one. Exactly. It looks like a, a C. Okay? That's the crescent moon. So when the crescent moon of Ramadan uh, is, if you see that, if someone sees that, or we finish 30 days of Sha'ban, then we enter the next day we fast that means it is time for Ramadan okay that means we begin the month of Ramadan so that's just to give you an idea and that's very general we're gonna keep it very general and basic for us because we don't need to know all the details about it in case it's cloudy and so forth those things uh, are not necessarily important for us right now but 
Who fast? Who, who has the fast month of Ramadan? Now we're going to talk about that. There's three main conditions for fast in Ramadan. Firstly, the person has to be a Muslim. So can a Hindu fast in uh, Ramadan? No, he can't. Even if he fasts, he's not going to get ajr for it. Can a Sikh fast the month of Ramadan? No. What about a Buddhist? No. What about a Christian? No. No, because they won't get reward for it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they have to be Muslim. The first condition is you have to be Muslim. If you want to fast Ramadan, you have to be Muslim. If you want reward, now you can't say to someone, don't fast. But the thing is, if they fast, they will not get ajr from Allah. Their reward from Allah is only if they're from the people of Tawheed. Please don't put the, that in your, your foot. It's not. A, it's a thing for writing. And sometimes, jazakallah khair. So the first thing is you have to be a Muslim. The second thing is you have to be mature and you have to have an intellect. So that means you have to be of age. All of you guys, none of you guys are there yet. Except for you, of course and me but you have to be mature that means for you have to be a, for the boys in general maybe like 15 years of age or that means they enter puberty you know what puberty is puberty that means when you start to get hair you start to get a almost like a lahia not a lahia but you get it under your armpits and, and so forth when you start to show the signs of a man you have a wet dream okay then that means you entered puberty if you have a wet dream, if one day you wake up and your bed is wet for not because you went to the bathroom, that means you're entering puberty, which is getting close to that time. Okay, so that's why I'm telling you. So that's another thing. The person has to be a Muslim and they have to be mature. Mature means that they are now into puberty. They're starting to get hair. They're starting to, uh, you know, have those signs of puberty. Also, the person has to have intellect. If someone is crazy, their fast is not accepted. You have to have your, your aql, your intellect. That means you have to be, you have to know what you're doing. You can't be crazy. You can't be drunk on alcohol or drugs. Okay? Because your intellect has to be intact. Your mind has to be straight. That's another condition. Rashad, what are the two conditions I just mentioned? First one is what? Okay, you have to have your intellect and mature and to be what? A Muslim. To be a Muslim. Right. The last thing is that you have to be able to fast. You have to be able to fast. If you're very sick, you're very old, you, you won't have to fast. And we're going to talk about that now. We're going to move to the people who do not have to fast. So who can break their fast? There are four categories of people. This is very important. We're going to talk about this quickly. The first person is a sick person who will be harmed by fasting or a traveler during travel. Those people do not have to fast. So if you're traveling, if you're traveling even from here, from Jeddah to Medina or from Jeddah to Haya or you're going to Yemen or you're going to America or Canada or Kenya or wherever, you do not have to fast. You can break your fast if you want to, if you think it's better for you, okay? Uh, the sick person also does not have to fast if they think they will be harmed by fasting, okay? So it's better for them to break their fast. For these two categories of people, it's better to break their fast, but if they fast, it's okay. Also, if they break their fast, they have to make up their fast. But they don't have to pay money, they don't have to feed the poor, nothing. They have to make their fast up. So if they, if someone travels and they miss two days of Ramadan, how many days do they have to make up of Ramadan? Two days, okay, good. The second category of people who can break their fast is the woman who is menstruating. Meaning the woman, she's having her, her monthly cycle. She's bleeding. Okay? This, the, uh, the woman who is menstruating and the woman who is still bleeding after she has a baby. If she has a baby and she's still bleeding, then she does not have to fast. In fact, she cannot fast. Then for her, it's haram to fast. 
those two categories of women, they cannot fast if they are bleeding. Okay? And for them, they uh, it's wajib to break their fast. They have to break their fast. And they have to make up their fast. So if a woman, if she has this time during her during Ramadan, maybe she misses one week. Maybe she misses, misses six days or seven days because she's having her menstruation period. She should not fast those six days. And after Ramadan, she should make up those six days. And this is authenticated for us in a hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She was asked by one of the sahabiyat. She was asked uh, uh, about fasting. Uh, she said, uh, and, and about praying. She said, uh, does the woman have to make up her prayer? And, and then Aisha asked, are you one of the hururiyah? A hururiyah? And she asked if she was one of the khawarij this particular group in Islam and she said she said no I'm just asking she said during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, we didn't have to make up uh, praying but we had to make up fasting okay for the woman who has her monthly cycle okay so this is the second category of people is the women who are on their menstruation period they're bleeding or they're bleeding after childbirth they just have to make up their fast the third category is the pregnant woman and the breastfeeding woman. If they are scared for themselves and their babies, if they're scared for themselves or they're scared that it's going to harm their babies by fasting, then they don't have to fast. They can break their fast, but it's different for them. They have to feed a poor person for every day they did not fast and they have to make up the days they missed. So for example, if a woman is breastfeeding, she's giving milk to her baby, and she's scared that her milk will dry up and her baby will starve or get sick or something, then she cannot, she can break her fast. But every day she broke her fast, she has to feed a poor person. So she, if she broke five days in Ramadan, she has to feed five poor people, according to the, uh, to the amount uh, that's required in the Sharia and she also has to make up those five days so if she's breastfeeding or she uh, or she's pregnant and she's scared it's going to hurt the baby she has to feed a poor person for each of those days and she has to uh, make up her fast the next category the fourth category is the person who's unable to fast because they're old or because they have a very serious permanent illness so this person who is very very sick or very very old and they they cannot fast they just can't do it it would maybe cause them to die and they just don't have the ability to do so this person does not have to fast but every day they don't Fast, so this sick person, this elderly person, they have to feed a poor person every day and they do not have to make it up. So the person who's severely sick, they have a permanent illness where the doctor says, you cannot fast. If you fast, you'll die or something like this. It's not even required for them to fast, but every day they have to pay, uh, they have to feed a poor person every day. Every day of Ramadan. So that means they have to pay in Ramadan probably 30 days or, or however many days it might be, then they have to pay, they have to feed uh, 30 poor people or 28 poor people or 29 poor people according to the month of Ramadan, how many days it falls. Okay? So that is for the, the a little bit about the people who do not have to fast. The last person who fits into this category that uh, it is... Uh, a person who has relations with their husband or wife during Ramadan or if they do it haram even this person if they do this during the month of Ramadan they have to free a slave in order to make up for the day they, they missed and they broke their fast and they did they, they had relations that they have to free a slave if they are not able to free a slave they can't find a slave like this day and age it's hard to find a slave they have to fast two months for that one day. They have to fast two months back to back, nonstop. Two months, like two, 
two Ramadans. It's like fasting two 30 day, 60 days back to back without breaking it, no, no break in between. Or if they are unable to do that, they know they can't do it, it's difficult on them, they try and they can't do it, and, and so forth, then they have to feed 60 poor people. And if they're too poor to do that, then, then it, uh, if they really, they cannot feed poor people even, they, they so poor themselves, then the, this obligation is, there's no obligation upon them. Those are just some of the things related to fasting. One last thing I want to read, which is very beneficial. This has to do with people who are sick and they have to take needles. Actually, we'll talk about that another time. So if a person has to take, uh, uh, if they, um, actually, we, we do need to talk very quickly about the things that break your fast, really quickly, because you need to know what breaks your fast. Some of the things that break your fast, for one, is if you eat or you drink or you have relations during Ramadan. Can you drink some water if you're real thirsty on Ramadan? No. No, you can't. That's going to break your fast. If you do that intentionally, if you have intention, if you, but if you forget, what if you forget and you're cooking food, you're getting ready, you're baking some sambusa, what if you eat one of those sambusas and you forget? Does that break your fast? Yes. She yeah. said no. She said yes. yes. No. He said no. Why do you say no? Because they don't remember that it was Ramadan. Jazakallah khayr, mashallah ta'ala So yes, if you forget, you didn't remember that it was Ramadan, you forgot, it's not going to hurt, hurt you. Even if you ate a whole sambusa. But then you remembered, stop for Allah, and you keep fasting. Or if you drank some water, you forgot. If you did it out of forgetting, it's not going to hurt you. This is with eating and drinking and so forth. Okay, so eating, drinking, and doing, if you try to throw up, if you throw up intentionally, you do it on purpose, this breaks your fast. The person who says, gosh, I, I, I want to throw up because whatever they reason they, they want to do that, uh, this will break their fast. If they throw up, they get sick, and they didn't have the intention, it doesn't break their fast. Also, the person who, um, who, who intentionally they uh, think about things that cause them to break their fast. Not that they think about it, but if they do some things, they play with themselves, so to speak, and it causes them to to have uh, what's called ejaculation, then this person will also, this breaks their fast, okay? And so doing these things, those are some of the things that break your fast. So eating and drinking, allowing for anything uh, to come into your mouth and, and go into your, your, your stomach, even if it's, if it's taking needles that are needles for food, that you need it to take for some sort of food or what have you, if you take a, a needle like this, vitamins or whatever, this is also going to break your fast. But there are certain kind of needles that some of the scholars say that does not break your fast. Like if you have to take it like a diabetic has to take their medicine, that does not break their fast as the Lejna say here. And we'll, we'll stop by reading this last fatawa. Um, uh, somebody asked, they said, I am a diabetic and I take... Uh, insulin injections on a daily basis that means they have to take this special medicine when I do not take this injection blood sugar level rises it is it permissible for me to inject insulin during the daytime in Ramadan it is worth mentioning that my health state deteriorates every Ramadan because I stopped taking inje injection this person if they stop taking their medicine they get very sick in Ramadan so I thus have to go to the hospital and do not observe some for about 10 days which I make up for later. Please tell me what to do, bearing in mind that such an injection therapy is not effective when taken at night. So this person has to take these needles of injections of their medicine. So they ask what should they do? They ask this to the major scholars here in Saudi Arabia. The ulama, the scholars, they said, it is permissible for you to take the injection referred to above during the daytime without being required to make up for the psalm. 
the fast of any day. However, it is preferable to take the injection at night if this causes no hardship for you. May Allah grant us success. May peace and blessing be upon our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this was the answer, is that some people, if they have to take this medicine, that this will not break their fast. Also, there's authentic hadith, and the scholars differ about this. If you get cupping, if you get hijama, or if you do hijama, this breaking your fast. Some of the ulama say that it is not break your fast. It is better. The afla, the best thing is to stay away. Do not get hijama. Do not donate blood during the month of Ramadan. So that way you stay away from the differences of opinion with the scholars regarding this issue because there is an authentic nas, nasus, supporting both opinions. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to make it during this whole, to make it to Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Muslims everywhere to fast the holy month and benefit from the holy month and to have forgiveness for their sins. And may Allah bless us all with Jannah to Firdos.